Moinsen! Ist mal wieder Zeit für ein neues Video. Schön, dass du eingeschaltet hast. Worum geht's denn heute? VHS Rebase. Nach dem Intro geht's los. Abfahrt. Kurzer Disclaimer. Ich habe sie leider noch nicht zu Hause gehabt zum Testen. Aber der gute Boosted Media hat nochmal äh, reingeschaut und hat äh, seine alte Review genommen und hat die ganze nochmal ja, aufleben lassen, aufgefrischt und hat nochmals reingeschaut, was so die Software kann und äh, wie sich das mittlerweile entwickelt hat. Und oh boy, gucken wir mal kurz rein. So we're jumping back in the cockpit today with the Direct Force Pro from VRS or Virtual Racing School. Now, we did a full review of this direct drive wheelbase pretty much exactly two years ago here on the channel. And I would definitely recommend if you're in the market looking at a direct drive wheelbase, definitely check out that review as a preface for the video that we're doing today. So as you guys will be aware, a lot of products do evolve over time. Firmware updates, software updates come out. So what we're going to be doing today is revisiting the Direct Force Pro and seeing how the user experience has evolved evolved in the time since we did our original review. So we're going to be looking at the user experience in terms of software, how the controls are all set up, as well as of course the all important driving experience. So let's just jump straight in. Der hat so ein schönes Studio mittlerweile, ne? Boosted Media. Kannst du sagen, was du willst, wirklich ein ganz ganz feiner Typ. Also der hat ja wirklich sich von nichts auf das hochgearbeitet. Okay, so starting off having a look at the software here. Now, they have also released their pedals in the time since we did our review too. So when you have their pedals connected, and we will be reviewing those very soon here on the channel, those can also show up in this software. General layout of the software is very similar. Look and feel is all pretty much identical to how it was when we did the original review. But they have moved a couple of things around here and of course added a few filters. Uh, one of which in particular was my main complaint in our original review. So it's going to be very interesting to check out the difference that that makes. So we've got our four feedback tab here with a dampening adjustment, friction adjustment and inertia. Now when we did our original review I got a little bit stuck. Uh, I didn't realize that these two sliders weren't actually functional. It was other adjustments that I was making that I was feeling having an influence. But I can tell you that now these absolutely do make a difference. The friction adjustment here just adds a general sensation of weight to the wheel like it's connected to a steering rack inside a Davon habe ich übrigens mittlerweile echt viel. Real car. The inertia kind of adds that sensation of the wheel continuing to try and turn uh, once you've sort of stopped putting an input in on your, with your hands. So what I can tell you is that this inertia effect now is probably the best inertia effect I've ever felt on any wheelbase that we've tested here at Boosted Media. It feels really, really, really authentic. The general smoothness of the wheelbase overall is still absolutely exceptional, just like it was two years ago when we did the review. You do occasionally get some funny little glitches when you're loading into games, things like that. But generally from a driving perspective, it is extremely smooth. But that's not to the detriment of those kind of more granular force feedback effects either. So it really is giving you the smoothness with the detail on top of that as well. So friction and inertia are working now. We're going to jump across to the filter tab quickly too. So we now have a couple of changes. Ich finde das so schön, dass die, ähm, dass die Software einfach komplett simpel ist. Also es ist nicht irgendwie, dass du komplett erschlagen wirst mit unglaublich viel Zeug, sondern da sind zwei, drei Schieberegler. Nächster Tab, nächster Tab, nächster Tab. Bei Simocube beispielsweise hast du ein Fenster, wo du halt echt fünf Seiten durchscrollen kannst und da sind lauter Schieberegler und du sitzt davor. Pff, äh, okay, ähm, äh, 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 was soll ich jetzt machen? Das ist hier echt cool gelöst, muss ich sagen. Also die Einfachheit here we've got some more filters here for smoothing used to just be legacy one two three four were the filters that we had now you see at the moment i've got my eye racing profile loaded i found that responsive one felt really good in eye racing that only runs at 60 hertz uh refresh rate or uh, sample rate for the force feedback so i found that having a little bit more responsiveness here just did add that little bit of extra detail that was maybe lacking in eye racing now if you're using irffb or something like that you may find it's a little bit different and i'm not really recommending my settings here it is purely a subjective thing but this is what I found felt good for me. Now, static force reduction was the big one that I felt was missing previously. What this setting does 
is it allows you to reduce the amount of force feedback that's coming through or the static force in the wheel when you're coming through corners and things. And the reason why I felt that that was lacking in the original review was that when you're coming around a corner, often the force feedback could be overpowering, but if you crank the force feedback strength down to compensate for that, you would also be cranking down the more granular detail. So I found for iRacing for the more slower or GT style cars, around 30% felt pretty good. Maybe reduce that a little bit if you're driving something like an F1 car. Non-linearity, this. Das ist übrigens auch eine ne, ne Sache, die mir bei iRacing aufgefallen ist im Vergleich zu ACC. Du hast in iRacing wirklich immer volle Power auf dem Lenkrad drauf. Also wenn du eine Kurve fährst, merkst du richtig diese, dass du ganz, ganz viel Kraft aufwenden musst, um durchzufahren. Das ist echt cool, äh, dass es ein... Ich weiß gar nicht. Ja, es ist ja ein Filter, dass es ein Filter gibt, der das ein bisschen geringer macht. Ist echt nicht schlecht. This is a new filter as well. Didn't really feel like that added anything that I felt was beneficial, but again, have a play with that and see what it does for you. Now, slew rate, this is a new adjustment too. We have an option here for performance, balanced and quiet. Now, slew rate is the ability of the motor to respond quickly to uh, what's going on inside the game. So if you've got a sudden change in direction, how quickly the motor is able to actually relay that information across cool. to you. Now, with quiet, I felt that things just felt a little bit too damp. And performance mode, this does make the wheel feel quite a bit more snappy. But what I found is that you get this kind of sensation. It's not really torque ripple or cogging, but you get this kind of vibration effect that goes on through the wheelbase. It's because the, the sample rate's so fast that I think it's sort of getting into a little bit of a feedback loop maybe and just sort of adding a little bit of noise, I guess would be the best way to describe it to the signal. So I didn't really like the sensation of that because I felt like it was kind of pulling away from the immersion a little bit. I, f I, was, I was constantly aware of that going on in the background to the point where it didn't really feel so authentic anymore. So I found that uh, the balance slew rate felt, felt best for me, but again, have a play with it. Uh, and then we also have adjustments for end stops, which is just your, um, your bump stops at the end of the rotation in the wheel. So we don't really need to spend any time on that. So yeah, look, adding these new filters definitely does make a big difference. So let's load my profile now for ACC and talk a little bit about the changes that I made there. We'll take you in and do some driving and explain actually what I'm feeling through the wheelbase in just a minute. Now, there are only a couple of little adjustments here that I had to make. And one of the other complaints that I had about this wheelbase originally is when we tested it across a variety of different sim titles, the uh, consistency in the force feedback was quite different. And that's important if you're maybe driving similar types of cars, but between different sims. So maybe you're doing a lot of GT3 and you like to change between ACC, R Factor 2 and iRacing, for example, then uh, you, know, you wanna have relative consistency between those. Otherwise your muscle memory kind of just doesn't really play into effect. So obviously there are going to be subtle nuances between them, but you want it to be as similar as it possibly can be. So what I did here was really just change. You can see my dampening, my friction and my inertia were all exact. Das habe ich übrigens noch nie hingekriegt, dass sich das überall gleich anfühlt. Das fühlt sich überall anders an. In jedem Game. Exactly the same as they were in <coughs> iRacing. So I increased the static force reduction just by 10%. Just felt that that took the edge off a little bit more. This force feedback was just a little bit stronger in the corners in ACC than it was in iRacing. But again, that will depend, of course, on the car that you're driving. The main change that I made, well, really the only other change that I made was just changing the filter from responsive, like we talked about before, to soft one. Now, I want to just quickly read the notes here from the change log from, uh, from the guys at VRS just to explain this a little bit better. So... Uh, one of the things that they talk about here is new and improved smoothing options. Legacy 1 to 4, like we talked before uh, about, is the original smoothing options. Responsive 1 and 2 are new direct filters, which remove the quantization steps from the input signal and minimize filter lag. The optimal filter frequency removes quantization from the input, but also makes it feel less direct or more soft without loss of detail. Now, what I found in ACC, because that's running at 400 hertz, as opposed to the 60 hertz that you get in iRacing, some of that really high frequency detail did just start to feel a little bit noisy inside the wheelbase. So what I ended up using was the soft one preset. What it says about that is soft one to three modes not only smooth the input from the game, but also remove high frequency signals from the input. The soft modes are helpful for games that run high force feedback update rates and output unwanted high frequency vibrations, which is exactly what I was feeling originally with the same setting that I was running in iRacing. That explains that. Yeah, the other thing... Witzigerweise... <coughs> Witzigerweise höre ich sowas gar nicht, weil ich meine Kopfhörer aufhabe. Also ich höre nicht, was meine Wheelbase macht. Ich bin immer wieder verwundert, wenn Leute zu Gast sind und ich mal keine Kopfhörer aufhabe und ich das erste Mal die Wheelbase höre. Also bei meine, meine macht das auch in gewissen Situationen, aber ich kriege das nie mit. 
thing you'll notice here as well is a new button for installing or uninstalling, which is a nice touch, uh, game compatibility registry key. Now, the, the reason why I say it's a nice touch that you're able to uninstall it as well is sometimes making changes to registry keys can mess with other equipment or if you upgrade your wheelbase to something else maybe later on down the line, it may interfere. So the fact that we have that button there is a really nice touch. Now, one of the complaints that we had with the original review as well was that some of the sim titles took a little bit more work to get going. You had to go into INI files, make adjustments and things like that. So having this here is a really great thing. Literally all I had to do was just hit that install button, reboot the PC and uh, maybe not even have to reboot the PC, but I did anyway. But yeah, all the sim titles that we tested it with originally were all absolutely fine with no other adjustments necessary nice. to, uh, to make them work. So that definitely improved the user experience as well. So in terms of the user interface and the user experience with the software, look, it was pretty approachable before. Uh, it was pretty self-explanatory as well. One thing I would still like to see them add is some tool tips when you hover over each setting just to let you know exactly what it's doing. Hopefully this video has helped you out with a bit of an explanation there as That's well. Really cool. But look, very approachable overall. The changes that they've made definitely make sense. And they have added all the things here which I felt were missing previously. So let's go for a drive now in iRacing. We'll do some driving in ACC as well, talk you through the differences there in the driving experience. And then we'll wrap things up with our conclusions and some comparisons with some other products which have entered the market since our original review of the Direct Force Pro. Ich kenne das noch von äh, Error, weil der fährt ja auch diese Wheelbase. Der hat mir einfach mal ein Screenshot geschickt von einem grauen Fenster mit, mit so ganz einfachen, ganz kleinen, viereckigen Kästchen, die man so von rechts nach links schieben konnte. Und ich so, sag mal, Maga, hast du äh, den richtigen Treiber runtergeladen oder die richtige Software? Ja, wieso? Ja, das sieht so nach 1990 aus irgendwie. Also ich meine, es erfüllt seinen Zweck und die Wheelbase funktioniert auch. Die Oberfläche sah halt nur einfach nicht nach sag ich mal, was Neuem aus, ne? Was überhaupt nicht schlimm ist. Ist mir nur in dem Moment aufgefallen. Okay, so we're in a Ferrari 488 GT3 Evo in iRacing around Spa. Let's drive out and I'll talk you through what I'm feeling, how it compares to the previous experience and uh, yeah, all those important things. So iRacing, as we alluded to earlier, uh, does run at a lower sample rate in terms of its force feedback. Also tends to lack a little bit in terms of things like road detail. So we made those few little changes in the software earlier as I described, just to sort of try and bring out that little bit of extra detail. But I can tell you already, I'm noticing the uh, the difference in that uh, static force reduction as we talked about earlier. Now, this isn't the first drive that I've done with this. Obviously, I went through earlier and made those adjustments just to make things a little bit more efficient here, but change down to fifth gear. The things that I was looking for were not losing any detail in the road surface. And I'm, I'm, I am getting a good amount of detail come through still having a good amount of smoothness in the wheel as well. And that is one of the things that's absolutely outstanding about this wheelbase as I almost put it in the wall. There you go. Now, that... I find it so crazy that there is no movement in the curves. In the curves, for me, the curves are extremely much. The Lenkrad extremely much. The little uh, tank slapper that we had there was actually a good, ex uh, a good example of one thing that I did want to talk about, actually. So, you'll notice, you would have noticed earlier, I had the inertia setting turned up quite high and I made the comment that... Um, it was probably the most authentic feeling inertia that I'd ever felt. And what I mean by that is, you know, the sensation of the wheel sort of trying to continue to turn when you stop actually inputting something. And that is important because it gives it the sensation of, you know, weight in the steering, like the steering's actually connected to something inside the car. Now on rapid changes of direction like that, there is a little bit of, I guess what I would describe hysteresis going on. So one thing I would like to see them add is a little bit more non-linearity just for that particular effect. The uh, non-linearity adjustment that we saw earlier doesn't really influence that. So it'd be good to have some sort of a filter where like around the center, maybe it was a little bit less profound or maybe at lower speed or something like that. I'm not sure exactly how they would go about implementing it, but you know, rapid changes of direction mid corner, it feels really good. But if you got a little twitch like that, it kind of gives a sensation like the steering wheel's got a lot more weight behind it than it should do. So it's a bit of a balance there with that setting. But I would still say that it feels more authentic than most other wheelbases that I've tested. I'm kind of nitpicking just to sort of say that's one little filter that I probably would add. Now you'll have to excuse my terrible driving while we warm up the tires and sort of get settled in here. But I'm feeling a good amount of detail in road texture for iRacing. Ich finde das so interessant, dass es super wenige Menschen gibt, die richtig fahren können, also richtig, richtig und quatschen können. Nebenbei. But not at the detriment of smoothness 
or refinement or anything like that. I'm not getting any torque ripple, any cogging, any sort of graininess in the motor response that makes it feel less authentic. That is, you know, we've talked about it with the DD2 and DD1 recently where you don't really notice it when you're driving, but it is there. And for those who are like me that kind of, you know, really pay attention to those kinds of things, they really kind of stand out. This does give you a more overall authentic feel than what you get in, uh, you know, something like a DD1 or DD2. So, yeah, look, comparing to something like the Mozza bases, I think that this is probably a little bit more refined in the more granular detail. I feel like you have to use a little bit more filtering on the Mozza bases to, to get it to feel as refined and as smooth as this. But then that comes at the detriment of not having that granular detail where it's... Ich wünschte mir, ich hätte einen Vergleich und wäre im realen Leben mit so einem Auto schon mal gefahren. Das, also, dass man das mal in der Hand hat, dass man weiß, wie es sich anfühlen müsste. Weil für die meisten Menschen, wie jetzt Sim fahren, ist das ja wirklich nur ein wildes Raten. Ich würde wirklich mal interessieren, wie viel Kraft ist an einem Lenkrad dran? Also in einem, in einem Auto, weil <lacht> die kommen da ja schon raus und schwitzen wie, wie Sau. Die müssen da drin ja irgendwas ackern. So, es gibt jetzt aber so wie Will zum Beispiel, der fährt super smooth Settings irgendwie. Also das sieht immer so aus, als wenn er nicht irgendwas machen muss. Also du siehst auch seine Unterarme, da passiert nicht viel so. Es ist so, fühlt sich an wie normal Straßenauto fahren, wo die, die Servolenkung halt super, super hart reinkickt. Und das würde mich wirklich mal interessieren, wie ich das hier. You can kind of have your cake and eat it too, which is really, really nice. So this is very, very close, if not as good as the Simi Cube 2 range, which are my benchmark. And I think when you consider the price here, that's pretty darn awesome. So obviously there are ecosystem considerations there as well. But I think that pretty much covers everything we need to cover in terms of iRacing. So yeah, we've got a good amount of detail for iRacing in the road textures. The ripple strips feel pretty consistent. Uh, smooth force feedback, a good sensation of the weight of the car. All those important things are all definitely present there and they've definitely been improved since, uh, since we looked at it previously. So let's jump into ACC now and have a look at the experience there. Okay, so same car and track combination this time in ACC. So the Ferrari 488 GT3 Evo around Spa. Now immediately I'm feeling Ein recht schönen guten Morgen, meine ah, lieben Zwergenfreunde aus es. nah und fern. Zipfel auf. Da ist es. Gut. <lacht> da müssen die Arme ein bisschen ackern. Granular texture in the road surface. The bumps feel more profound through the steering than they did in iRacing as well. The, look, the overall feeling of force feedback is consistent though in terms of the inputs that you're making, the smoothness and things like that. So it's not different enough that it's going to throw out your muscle memory. But there's just more detail inherent in ACC than there is in iRacing. So with that Aya. smoother profile, as we discussed earlier, it really does smooth out. They do a, they've done a really nice job of smoothing out that really high frequency detail that made the base feel a little bit grainy and a little bit robotic maybe. One of the other things I noticed running the responsive profile as well is you did get the occasional little robotic glitch mid-corner if there was a tiny little correction in the steering, something that you had to do, or just a bump in the road or something. Occasionally you get a kind of robotic jerk in the steering that is not there with this smoother profile. It's maybe filtering the ripple strips a little more than I would like, but the detail is still there. So it is a balance and you can play around, you can play around with those filters to find what's going to suit you best, but it is it is a bit of a trade-off either way. But yeah, look, this, this feels otherwise very, very similar to what it did in iRacing, which is what we want. We've got all that detail there. Es ist auch interessant zu beobachten, wenn iRacing, also Menschen, die sehr viel iRacing oder hauptsächlich iRacing fahren, wenn die zu ACC wechseln und wie die bremsen. Das ist immer super interessant zu sehen. So, bei iRacing ist es ja so, es gibt nicht volle Pulle Bremsen. <lacht> gibt es nicht. Sondern da bremst ja immer so ich glaube 90 Prozent ungefähr und dann fängst du aber schon ein bisschen früher an äh, zu bremsen als in, in ACC und bei denen sieht das immer so total entspannt aus beim Fahren, also so rund und so rund und entspannt, ja. Und wenn du dann jemanden guckst, der ACC fährt, 
hauptsächlich, bei dem sieht das dann nicht mehr so aus. The sensation of weight in the car is absolutely fantastic and it's just overall, like I said about iRacing, a much more refined experience than it was before, both from the, uh, you can see there again, a big twitch in the steering, but I was able to catch it pretty easily. We did have that inertia thing that I was talking about before, but that's just to do with filters rather than the force feedback coming out of the game. Crank down the traction control a little bit. And just let you guys see how I'm reacting to little slides and things like that. Try and get it turned in nice and early, back on the throttle. A little bit over the edge, you felt the weight of the car transfer as we bumped over the little sausage curb there. Get it turned in, up over the ripple on the inside. And just being able to feel the sensation of those rumble strips and feeling the weight of the car go up on the curb just gives you more confidence in using the uh, the full extent of the track. And that's one thing that I've been criticized for a lot in my driving is uh, not using the width of the track enough. Ja, du bezahlst ja auch den ganzen Track. Nicht nur einen halben. And the detail that I'm getting here just does allow me to do that a little bit more. I missed, a bit, missed the apex a little bit there, but you really do feel what's going on the car. It's hard to drive fast and talk at the same time as anybody that's the overall. Yeah, du, kannst du aufhören, bitte uh, alles zu drücken? Smoothness is just like a DD1 doing here in today's video. But yeah, look, this just overall very well refined and I kind of like feel like I'm just repeating myself now. So let's uh, let's jump out and uh, let's go talk about our final conclusions. And uh, yeah, we'll wrap things up. So to summarize the experience with this, look, I'm really, really impressed. They've they've addressed all the things that I was disappointed about in the original review. And look, overall, we felt like it was a really good product, particularly for the price back then, two years ago. But now it really, really is outstanding, I would say, for the price. Now, there are still some limitations there when it comes to the wider ecosystem. As I touched on earlier, they do have pedals now. We will be reviewing those very soon. They also have a wheel coming very soon too. We'll also be checking that out. So they are expanding their ecosystem. Obviously, it's an open platform here too, so you can use any wheel that you want uh, as long as it has its own independent connection back to your PC. So you can see here we're using a cube controls wheel, for example, and that works absolutely fine. If you're looking for something that's a more plug and play integrated ecosystem, like what we have with Fnatic. For example, where you can just plug the wheel in, make adjustments to your force feedback on the wheel itself. Things like having mobile apps to make adjustments as well. None of that stuff has been implemented with the uh, with this product yet. So that is probably where the main difference, I'd say, in the user experience comes. But look, in terms of the overall user experience, accessibility, ease of use, all those things, I think that this software is very approachable. It does look a little bit old fashioned, uh, but you know, in terms of the core functionality, everything is there. And I think particularly when you consider the fact that you know this does come in at 20 to 30 percent cheaper than a lot of the other wheelbases that are on the market at around this kind of strength rating so if you look at something like the r16 the r21 uh, we will be doing full reviews on those very soon too but i have been driving with those quite a bit in preparation for that and the experience there is kind of as i was touching on in the driving segment of this video you can make them feel as smooth as this but that comes at the uh, at the i guess at the cost of that granular detail. Whereas with this, we really were able to dial it in and you know get have our cake and eat it too, basically. We were able to get all that detail out of it, but not have to sacrifice smooths. We don't have any problems with torque ripple, cogging, anything like that. And look, overall, I think that they've done a really good job in further refining this product since we originally tested it. If you are looking for a stronger direct drive wheelbase, you're not worried about the uh, console compatibility, the wider ecosystem and things like that, then this definitely should be on your shortlist. So I really hope today's video has helped you out as I said before, check out our original review as well for more details on build quality and all those things. But that wraps things up for today, guys. So thank you very much for watching. If you do own one of these, let us know what you think down in the comments below as well. That's always very useful for people that are watching and maybe looking at buying something like this. But we'll wrap it up there for today, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again very soon. Bye. Das ist ja auch so eine Sache, äh, also das ist auch eine Wheelbase, die ich super, super gerne mal ausprobieren wollen würde. Weil die ist vom... Die ist so in der Price Range drinne, wo, denke ich mal, jeder sagen würde, okay, ist nicht zu krass und ich krieg was dafür. Und in diese Pre Price Range gehen super viele Filme ja aktuell auch rein. Also Moser ist da jetzt drinne, 
Äh, Asitec wird da äh, reinhauen. Äh, VRS ist da ja jetzt auch schon drin. Ich bin wirklich sehr gespannt, wie sich der Markt sich entwickelt. Also du merkst halt auch bei, bei VRS, äh, sie arbeiten noch da dran, was ich unglaublich toll finde. Äh, also was ich wirklich sehr, sehr toll finde, dass sie trotzdem alles noch überarbeiten, scheinbar auch das Feedback äh, umsetzen, was sie von, von außerhalb kriegen. Das ist echt eine gute Sache. Das ist wirklich eine gute Sache. Bin sehr gespannt, wo die Reise dahin geht, was uns da noch äh, erwartet in Zukunft. Hm. Du, schön, dass du dir das Video angeguckt hast. Ich hoffe, du hattest äh, Spaß dabei und äh, lass mich jetzt mal unten in den Kommentaren wissen, wie du das äh, empfindest oder empfandest und äh, wie du zu dieser Wheelbase stehst. Sie ist mittlerweile gar nicht mehr so ein Underdog und äh, behauptet sich so langsam auf dem Markt. Und ich bin wirklich auf den Tag gespannt, wo ich mal eine in meinen Händen halten darf und sie auch mal ausprobieren darf. Denn meine Freunde so im engeren Kreis fahren VRS Wheelbase und sie schwärmen davon. Also, du drückst jetzt vielleicht nochmal aufs Däumchen, lässt nochmal einen Kommentar da, dann abonnierst du den Kanal, machst die Glocke an und dann machst du den Larry. Oder guckst noch ein weiteres Video. Lass dir gut gehen. Hab einen wunderschönen Tag. Bis dann.